Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Canadian Shield, your trusted source for analysis. My name's Sterling. I'm your host. There was a poll dropped by 338. I picked it up. Uh, I'll leave a link for their website down in the description where they are talking about the NDP losing as many as 10 seats in the upcoming, if an election were to happen today, that was the question. Now, I found the question, but I didn't find the plus minus and I didn't find like the margin of error and I didn't find the number of people or I did not find where it was polled at, right? And remember my position on, on polling because I understand polling because I, I, I know that, that field and you know, to give you an example of how it might play out for if you were in Edmonton and you asked them to pick your favorite hockey team, what would they pick? Now, if you fly over to Halifax and ask the same question, what would the number, what would the poll reflect? That's without factoring in, you know, the, the particular mood. So if, for example, Edmonton just lost a head to head in the playoffs against Calgary, the, the number might drop a little bit lower. Or if they say just beat Vancouver, you know, the, the number might be a little bit higher. And that is a, reflected in the way that the, all polling works. All right, before I get into it, I just want to remind you that every time you give a thumbs up, you tell the Liberal Party that you don't agree with, with censorship in any way, and you tell the algorithm that other people might like to watch this program. So subscribe, thumb up. Leave a comment. Now, I tell you that not because polling is not a good barometer, but because polling is not necessarily something that you can take to the bank. However, most politicians don't understand that, so they live and they like they live and breed these kinds of polls. They go crazy on them. And when I see the results of this current one, this most recent one, I, I think I begin to understand what's gotten under Jagmeet's skin, like why he's shown up in the house drunk and challenging everybody to a fist fight. I think that the numbers that he thought were going to boost shoot right up through the roof have gone the other way when he made this uh, gigantic, dramatic announcement. So just let's reiterate a, a couple of things. If you ask the same person, the same subject with three different questions, you might get three different answers. That's the nature of polling. The question, there's a lot of power in the question, how they perceive the question, which is why they're often given on a scale, not a direct answer. Like, you know, strongly agree or strongly disagree. That's why my, most of my polls show up that way. I mean, sometimes I like to put in things to make people laugh, but when I get serious, then they're just those kinds. These polls about the numbers are probably being taken online and they are probably having to prove who they are so they will know geographically where the numbers are coming from. And of course, the NDP has never been strong. But the recent polling, as you can see here, says that they have lost, projected to lose 10 seats. Now, they just got one seat, so their number says 25. And when you ask, when the polling comes through, they get only 15 they're coming down to. So the seat by seat projection is 220 for the conservatives. That's astounding. There's 64 for the liberals, nearly a hundred seats lower than they are currently, which is of course the way that it's going to work. It's not so much that the, the liberal government has completely and utterly screwed us. It's that they keep trying to convince us that they're doing what's best for us while our lives go worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. I've never seen such a degree of arrogance, but I suppose that's what the left looks like. They just think they're smarter than everybody, all of them. Now the block having 42 seats, I, I just think that the block should just not even be permitted in the house. I mean, when you when your whole intention is to destroy the country that you're in their parliament for, that's, that's wrong in my book. However, it is a strong indication of how bad the liberals are doing in Quebec because it's less about the party separating when they vote for the bloc. It's more about the idea that they're mad at the liberals, you see, the voting population. And of course, the Greens still manages to hold on to their two seats, which is odd because I think the one fella resigned. Or the one fella resigned as being party, co-party, uh, vice president, something. I forget the ins and outs of it. 
the Green Party, of course, their whole mandate is lost in the in the in the hubbub of the carbon argument, right? It's hard to talk about the environment when everybody is so fixated on how the carbon tax is crushing their life and how the federal government does ridiculous things like, you know, tells you that you got to pay carbon tax, but then doesn't support tree planting, which will pull carbon right out of the air. So there's a lot that's lost on the, on the ins and outs of it. As you can see there, however, those 10 seats are an enormous blow to Jagmeet Singh's uh, ego. Those 10 seats are going to be, I think the reason that Jagmeet Singh is having such a hard time right now, can, can maintaining his composure. I honestly believe that he thought in his mind or the people that he paid for the advanced polling, that he would rip up the agreement and everybody would just flock over to him, right? Like he felt like he would take, he, he honestly believes that he can take seats away from the conservative party by talking about the exact same issues that the liberals have. Right, like he thinks that if he slams Pierre Polyev and just says, I don't agree with the liberals, all these people are just going to flock to him, despite all of his history, right? We know that he has no, no plan for the environment. We know that he has no plan for the economy. We know these things, right? Because you hear him stand up and say it all the time. He's just simply lashing out left, right, and center. But in his mind, I think, in the mind of the... Because they, they live in such of a... Um, echo chamber that they don't ever hear the outside and of course he's an elitist right he was born rich not wealthy rich right his parents paid tens of thousands of dollars a year from elementary school for him to go to school so this isn't a guy who's you know doing all right this is an upper middle class this is upper class right and he doesn't understand the the people that live the everyday life. I mean, his, his idea of the, the, you know, he goes grocery shopping with a friend of his or one of his staffers and he acts like it's an, an accomplishment. He acts like it's some sort of a big deal. It's probably the first time he's ever been to a grocery store in his life. I mean, I don't know that, but I'm just saying you get, you get the point. This is a guy that in all likelihood has staff in his house, right? That are not associated with being in parliament. So he doesn't, he's not going to be in touch with what the common person is thinking or more importantly, what they're going through. However, he doesn't care, right? He just thinks that if he says common man, common man, common man, worker, 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 I stood on a picket line, everybody's just going to flock to him. Unfortunately for him, he doesn't understand because he doesn't understand that he made horrible decisions. He tried to challenge a guy to a fist fight. And, you know, you can try to challenge Pierre Polyev in the house and everybody will laugh and everybody will think it whatever. But when you stood ac across from a regular guy who's just trying to tape you with his cell phone, challenged him to a fist fight with three armed guards at your back, you lose footing with every common man on earth. Now they've made it worse, right? So now you're not even allowed to go there. That's what they've done. Instead of saying, okay, Jagmeet, next time behave yourself, now they've strict. They made the rules stricter so people aren't allowed to go in there anymore. That's the kind of government that we're, the NDP supports, right? They want to even be more isolated, these man, men of the people. It's a ridiculous concept, and of course it blew up in his face, but he wouldn't have understood that. So now he sees his numbers tumbling down and down and down and down. And of course, because he's not built for fortitude, because he's always had everything handed to him, he gets hammered and lashes out at people. And as a result of that, his numbers go even further. If this guy was smart, he would just walk in on Tuesday. He would throw his support unequivocally behind Justin Trudeau, or excuse me, behind uh, Pierre Polyev's motion for a um, no confidence the bloc would do the exact same thing because every second that those guys support the Trudeau government, every second that they put the common person through more of this hardship is every vote they're losing. Can you imagine what's going to happen when we get, we come up on any minute now, the economic damage is about to really blow up, right? The summertime numbers are going to start rolling in and the summertime was horrible. And they think somehow that they're going to run around and patch it up and fix it up. The rents are back up through the roof. Tent cities are popping up in the left, right, and center. These numbers are only going to go further and further. And once the conservatives start taking a polling lead or a polling, taking some of the share in Quebec, well, what will they do then?
right? What will the what will the opposition parties do then? They will constantly be playing back, you know, chasing, chasing, chasing. The action of letting that first a chance to bring us to an election pass on Tuesday is going to destroy either any opportunity that those those uh, parties have to make themselves think that they can associate with the people. That's just my opinion on the matter. All right, I'm going to wrap here. I want to thank you all for listening. Uh, what do you think? Do you think that Jagme made his own bed and that he should lie in it? Do you think he should resign? Do you think that the conservatives will gain any uh, political clout by putting forward this motion on Tuesday? Let me know down in the comments. I'll talk to you next time.